UPS is sponsored by Urban Exchange, no, offering quality and creative fashion options for men and women, really? as well as the opportunity to I mean, sell have, and uh, trade. Uh, Urban Exchange has a large selection of vintage furniture and local music acts at the Den T Bar. Urban Exchange, inspiring creative approaches to fashion and personal expression. Located on 1932 Pacific Ave in downtown Tacoma and at urbanexchangeonline.com. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to a live edition of Across Campus broadcasting from the Logger Nation station, KUPS 90.1 FM Tacoma. This is the last show of Across Campus for this semester, and we have four outstanding members of the class of 2012. Um, I was trying. I was trying to. I was trying to think of a cool group to bring in that could represent that class. And all four of these, all four of our guests today, uh, received awards from the university uh, just a little over a week ago now at the at the leadership award ceremony. And so, just uh, these are our four. Our first one is first is Marcus Luther. He's the Norton Clapper Award, award recipient for outstanding achievement. Uh, he's the outgoing president of ASUPS. He's majoring in American in English literature and will be part of Teach for America Corps in the Mississippi Delta region uh, this coming fall. Lindsay Hammond was the recipient of the Kleiner Family Endowed Humanitarian Award. Serving time is, she's serving time as a TP in, as, a, as an RA in TP um, right now, and she was, actually, she was actually accepted into one of the most selective student affairs programs in the country at the University of Vermont this coming fall. We also have Sandra Rosa Bryant. She was the Yumi Kawaji Outstanding Woman of the Year recipient. She's an, Engl she's an English major with an emphasis in creative writing. And she's heading to Detroit this summer after she gradu graduates and has a number of possibilities on the horizon. So maybe something with AmeriCorps, maybe something at a bookstore, but whatever she does, I'm sure it's going to be phenomenal. We also have Kyle Sleeper. He was the Greek Man of the Year and the Ralph Olson Memorial Award recipient. He is a science, technology, and society, and an he is a science, technology, and society major and an environmental policy and decision-making minor. He's going to be working in San Francisco with consulting from Milsal McCall Strategies starting in June. So, all of you, welcome to the show. This is a great crowd that we have in the studio today, an all-star lineup. Thanks, Casey. Thank you. It's nice to be here. <laughs> yeah. It's a pleasure. All right. Awesome. So, I guess for our guests, I would love, I would love just to give everybody an idea of how you guys got to where you are now. You've had phenomenal careers at the University of Puget Sound, and I'd love to know like, how you built those platforms. Uh, let's start with you, Marcus. Like, who, were the, who were those big characters, and what, what, what were some of those like, big events that happened to you early on in your Puget Sound career that propelled you to where you are now? Well, I mean, I think sometimes when we think about like early on, we think about like critical choices or things that we hyperbolize our contribution to those choices. And for me, it was more just kind of things fell in line. You know, I came to this school because the baseball coach called, I ended up being an RA because my laptop got stolen, and the person who handled it said, you're really mature, you should you know, try to be an RA. Uh, so I ended up doing that, and then stumbled into Greek life, and then uh, Garner asked about ASAPs. So it's really been, I mean, just been really grateful because people just keep opening these nice doors, and yeah, I have to walk through them, but uh, it's really been something that I didn't envision. I didn't plan on being ASAPs president when I got here. It was very much kind of different doors opened along the way that I couldn't have predicted in the first place. But it was really, I guess... The, you know, the, the fortune to have those doors open and then just the willingness to walk through them, that made a huge difference. But uh, I couldn't have planned it out this way. I guarantee if I went back and did it again, it probably would have happened in a completely different fashion. Actually, I think about Garner, I think that's, I think that's interesting that somebody approached you to be president. Like, hey, I need a, I'm, I'm running for vice president. I need somebody to be my running mate as president. You think you can, you can jump on board with me? Hey, it worked out. I'm not yeah, it worked out. It worked out, worked out great. Yeah, so Lindsay, what about you? What were the big moments, big characters that got you to where you are now? I'd like to say that mine was as mapped out as Marcus's, but freshman year, I had no idea what I was doing here. I just knew that I enjoyed it. I liked the people I was meeting, and I liked my professors. And um, came in, thought I was going to play basketball. That didn't work out for whatever reason. I probably forgot how to play or something. But basically, I ended up trying to be an RA at the end of my year. I thought I was pretty mature. You know, Marcus had someone tell him that he was mature, but, you know, I really thought I was. Um, but they thought that I could use a little more growth and um, personal development, and I'm glad that, that happened. I got to live off campus with some great friends my sophomore year. And in that moment, kind of realized that I wanted to be, like, tied back and connected to the community a little bit more. I didn't catch that there was a number of great lectures going on that that year because I was off campus and it was just a block off but um, 
when I decided to apply to be an RA again at the end of that year, my sophomore year, um, I had been rowing crew and I had done some community service things and really loved being part of something bigger, liked being tied in with the, the campus. And so I applied to be an RA. They thought I was mature at this point in time and um, got placed in Trimble, had a really great time, rowed a second year. And I don't know, I think at that point when I was starting to get more involved, that's when the doors started opening and I started walking through them as, as Marcus was saying. So, um, but I definitely had to put myself out there, but this is a campus where that's definitely totally doable. So. And we actually just had the Res Life ceremony uh, last night and there were, there were a couple of the RDs kind of mentioned like points in time where they realized like, oh wow, I could real I can, I can like see myself going into student affairs. Like Lindsay, what, what point was that for you? Like when you decided like, Oh, I really enjoy being an RA. You got turned. You got turned down the first time that you that you want that you applied to do it. You got in the second time. Uh, you're you're now here. Your senior year, doing it for your second year in a row, and you've decided that you want to go into student affairs. So, like, what at what point did you decide, like, oh, this is I'm I'm really enjoying this position. Like, this is something I want to do, like, for the rest of my life. <laughs> I'd like to say that it was really clean cut, and there was this moment where I decided that I wanted to do it. But really, it was uh, my supervisor Jenny came up to me one day. Um, last winter, so a year ago, and she said, Lindsay, I really feel like you enjoy this job, you're good at working with students, you have fun with it, there's a passion there, you should consider uh, going to student affairs for a career, and I, I actually laughed at her, and I was like, Jenny, I don't want to live on campus for the rest of my life, and so uh, that's where that kind of sat for a few weeks, and then um, about maybe a month and a half later, I was looking at options for, for my future, for the real world, and um, I was having a great time in Trimble as an RCC, and I thought, again, you know what, maybe maybe I can live on campus for forever, um, but as I discovered, that's really not just what you do, just all that you do, so that's the good part. Um, I went to a summer program for undergraduate students looking to go into student affairs last summer in New Orleans so there was kind of a dual purpose there. I got to go to New Orleans for the first time and uh, meet some incredible student leaders and that's where it really solidified that I was heading into a field where people are super passionate about what they do and they really want to be part of a big campus community just like I did, just like I had realized uh, my sophomore year so that was really cool and um, it was a series of moments. It was someone telling me, hey, you're kind of mature, just like Marcus had, and me realizing that I could actually put my passions of working with people uh, to something and um, get a degree in it. And that's that degree is student affairs, AKA that I like working with people and I want to stay in college forever <laughs> degree. So I'm really excited about that. All right, moving along, we have Kyle Sleeper. Uh, so. Same, same question for Kyle. What, who were those big characters and big moments that got you to where you are now? Yeah, well, I, I came into Puget Sound after taking a year off after high school. And I came because of a financial aid letter. Um, and I stayed because of the people. I remember from the first day of passages, uh, I went on a backpacking trip. And I, I had just done a lot of backpacking during my year off. And I figured, Okay, this place is pretty cool. They're, they're taking me out of the woods this early. <laughs> um, and I just made a choice in my head to say yes to everything that came my way with the school. Uh, I wanted to just jump in and get my entire body wet with Puget Sound. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, gross. That's, that's gross. I like that. <laughs> um, no. But the metaphor was different. We haven't heard that one before. I don't yeah, no, I, I, I haven't that. either, actually. Um, <laughs> no, but then I, um, you know, I, I feel like I've, I've tried a little bit of everything. Um, tried a couple varsity sports. I played all the frisbee for three years. I was a cheerleader freshman year for a while. Uh, I got to be the mascot a sophomore year. That was fun. Um, but that was also a secret a couple years ago. Um, <laughs> and then I, you know, I did the ASIPS thing. I, I had it in my... When I came into college, I was I was really um, I was vehemently anti-Greek. I never I never thought I'd see myself in a fraternity, um, but then uh, Mo Stevens had become a pretty powerful mentor uh, to me through the Passages program because I had become an orientation leader, and he 
he was a fraternity man, and I was like, well, if someone like him is a fraternity man, it, it can't all be that bad. Um, and then I realized that some upperclassmen that I were close with, that I was close with, were were Greek, and that it surprised me. Um, and then a bunch of my friends were Greek, and they were totally awesome people. And I started doing a little research into what exactly it meant to be in a fraternity, and uh, thought it would be a cool little social experiment to try and start one. Um, so we got a little group of guys together, and uh, two years later, we have you know a, a full full charter fraternity on, on campus, and that's been pretty. It's been a pretty powerful experience and seeing that come to fruition. Um, but yeah, just, just kind of saying yes to everything. I, I would say that was the key. That was the key. Yeah. I just, I just love and have fun at Puget Sound. And I ended up reaping. I mean, I, I feel like I could not put as much into this school as I've gotten out of it. And I've tried my hardest to put as much as I could into it. And I, I keep getting more and more out of it than I put in. And that's, that's pretty cool that like one on one is greater than two in every case here. So, all right, great. We have to take a quick break. We still have one more guest to introduce you, introduce to you. So San Sandra Rosa will bring you on like right after this break. Uh, you're listening to KUPS ninety point one FM. This is Across Campus. Stay with us. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to Across Campus broadcasting out of KUPS ninety point one FM Tacoma. The sound. My name is Casey Krolchek. Today in the studio, we have members of the class of two thousand twelve. They only have a few more, well, I guess, a few more days of classes and then just a little over a week before graduation. And so I, I, ne I needed to make sure that I had them into the studio to kind of get their stories and share them with you. So we've already introduced three of our guests. We're moving on to our fourth one, Sandra Rosa Bryant. Uh, Sandra Rosa, can you t tell us about, like, building your life at Puget Sound? Like, what, what, was, what was that like? Like, what kind of characters did you meet and how did you build... The, pl the platform to propel yourself to where you are now. Woman of the Year, might I add. Woman of the Year. Um, yeah, so before I came here, I knew that um, I wanted to be a part of the Black Student Union, um, if they had one, and I was pretty sure that they did. And so um, even though I knew that I still needed somebody to kind of guide me into it, and I think um, use of words is kind of like a household thing around here. Um, was big in that. I remember him speaking at convocation and being like, dude, can I talk to this guy? And then um, also Nikki Wright, who was that year's president of the Black Student Union, um, she also helped me get involved with it. Um, so I'm really thankful for Sam. And then, yeah, I feel like most of my Puget Sound existence has kind of revolved around the Black Student Union. Um, and I definitely wouldn't have won that award if it wasn't for the BSU. Um, so yeah, I needed like guidance into that, and then once I kind of got my my foot into BSU, um, my sophomore year, my best friend Ayana Dracos became president, and she kind of she wasn't necessarily um, supposed to be president, but that's the way things worked out, and I'm glad that's the way things worked out. But she was able to like lift it up and make it more visible on campus. And after that, I was like, dude, BSU could be popping. And so <laughs> I was like, I want to like keep this going. And so um, my junior year, I was vice president. And then my senior year, I'm president of BSU. And if it wasn't for like the things that Ayana had done, I don't think that BSU would have been as strong um, just because I was able to see um, the potential that the club could have. Um, but one thing that did change when I um, became president was it kind of, it wasn't as visible on campus because I wanted it to be more, um, I wanted it to be more like somewhere where the members could really like form their own community and a bond like between themselves. So I focused more on that as opposed to um, like doing super big events on campus like we had my sophomore year. Um, but yeah, I think I think we needed something um, that would encourage members to just really develop friendships and have strong friendships. And I think we succeeded with that, so I'm happy. Um, and then we had like Kwanzaa, which is big, so our faces were out there sometime during the school year. Um, so yeah, I think 
that's my my sort of guideline story into how I got here today. So. All right, very cool. So, for almost four years have passed since you guys first got to campus, and in, in some ways, hopefully most ways, like the university has stayed the same, but it has changed quite a bit since you guys first got to campus. Like, just from how it looks to, I guess, like the student body dynamics. Like, can any of you guys like give uh, some insights as to like how the what the university was like when you first got here and how that might have changed or, and or developed, like coming up to this point where you're about to graduate. Yes, we can. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll kick us off. Kyle. Yeah, totally. Um, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, the the major construction that was done for Warehouser Hall and Commencement Walk. Just that the physical change of that. I was I was here for the summer, working for ASUBS and taking classes. Um, the summer if they broke ground, and I remember writing a little blog post just about the giant heap of gravel that turned up where the barracks used to be and you know, I'd done physical therapy a couple months beforehand and in in those barracks and I just I didn't really see this this beautiful new landscape of the of the campus actually in my in my mind's eye. I just I didn't really think it was gonna happen. Um, but then, you know, a year and a half later, I remember looking out from uh, when you when you're walking down from Thompson towards the sub and, and you look you look uh, south, and all of a sudden the entire campus is open, and the green doesn't stop. The green field like just keeps going, and the the walk keeps going. And um, before it, it it was like, oh, this is so beautiful, and then these ugly World War Two era bears <laughs> in the way. Um, so when those went, I mean. That's a that's a really basic physical change, but it's yeah, really, it, really it, like, it opened up the entire yeah. campus. Like you now, you can see from the field house all the way down to the library. Completely, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Um, Marcus, I'm gonna pick on you because okay. you, you're you're the outgoing ASUPS president, and I I just got into ASUPS as a senator, and there's a new or like a new a newly done constitution uh, in oh, ASUPS, yeah. and I've been told you had a lot you had a lot to do with that. Like what what prompted that like that those changes that you made like within the constitution and like why why did you want to push that forward? Well I mean with the with the constitution it's kind of an arduous process to change it so it just kinda of gets left untouched. I mean a lot of little <laughs> things that were just dust swept over under the rug over the last, you know, five, ten years. So we basically a lot of it's just cleaning it up. There's li literally typos in there that I just wanted to get changed. So really reformatting it's a little little things. There's some key point issues about transition and such, but Really, mainly it was cleaning it up and presenting it well, and just taking kind of the common sense solutions that people had talked about for years and making them uh, on paper real. And it was a long process. We got a lot of help uh, from a lot of people. I think you know us four people, and including you, Casey, is five. Uh, we're a very small portion of this campus, and there's a lot of people who do a lot of things. And I know for the Constitution, uh, a lot of people helped out with that. So it wasn't just me by any means. Yeah, I don't know if the microphone picked it up, but Lindsay went English major. <laughs> <laughs> when you when you were talking about cleaning it up and making making it look nice, but I actually read the constitution after <laughs> you changed it. I was is it beautiful? It's boring, but it, <laughs> it was awesome. It's it, a constitution. You did. You guys changed a lot, actually. It's so, inspiring. That's pretty proud of you guys. Well, I want to make sure that we talk about a very important change that happened: the uh, rebranding of the areas in the in the sub oh, where we on. eat. Um, when we were freshmen, we were just wee little 18, 19 year olds. We would eat at Full Fair. I remember Full Fair as well. That wasn't all that far off. Okay, well, my freshman residents do not know about Full Fair. They think I'm crazy when I throw it out there. But now it's the chef's table, which is fine. I just want to make sure that we, you know, remember it. We'll never forget it. Paid homage. Someone said chef's table the other day. And I, I had no idea what they were talking about. Mm -hmm. What, they have a new station? <laughs> yeah. There's like a table where the chef sits. That's what I would picture. Well, it's where it's it's big it's Big Mama's station. Like that's where we expect to get like a really like lovely like home cooked meal from Big Mama. Like, she's one mm -hmm. she's one of our favorites. Oh yeah, and then the other the other thing that they changed was uh, points. Like it was really great when we had meal points instead of like meal dollars because it didn't feel like we were spending actual wasting money. them. Yeah, yeah, it's like we like you're not actually spending real dollars. If See, you're... I don't even know about this. Cause I don't. I haven't had like a meal plan. Yeah. <laughs> they have dining dollars now. They have, they have dining here. dollars. Yeah. 
Well, s- well some of us are seniors still living on campus. So. <laughs> some of us. <laughs> some of us. Yeah. So I woke up this morning and I was telling them over the break that I was coming down the steps uh, in back of Todd Fibs and I realized that I was coming full circle, that I was leaving the residence hall that I lived in my freshman year and literally a full circle kind of cool thing and I'm a senior living with freshmen and that's pretty awesome. Who gets to do that? I do. That's lovely. <laughs> All right, we're going to we're going to take another quick break. You're listening to Across Campus broadcasting out of KUPS 90.1 FM Tacoma. Stay with us. Good morning everybody. You're listening to Across Campus broadcasting Woo! out of KUPS 90.1 FM Tacoma. The sound my name is Casey Krolchik. Today in the studio, we have mem- we have members of the class of 2012. They don't have that much time left with us before they graduate, so I made sure that I got in a great group to just talk about their last four years here at the University of Puget Sound. And so in, the, in this next segment, I, I asked everybody if they wanted to talk about like senioritis. And you know, we, have, you know, we all kind of experienced that to, to some extent in high school. And I was kind of wondering like from you guys, I mean, does, does that happen like when, when in college too? Like are you... <laughs> Are you, I mean, are you, are you kind of ready to move? Are, are, you, are you guys looking forward to, to graduating? Are you kind of nervous about it? Like, what, what is that like right now? I thought it was a myth, but then it hit a week ago. <laughs> so it senior, it still doesn't it's exist? It's real. Like, okay. It's real. It's out there. And so what, what like, what, what think, do you mean? I think like, it's like a, a latent, like, like a subconscious desire for self-sabotage so that you can Stay in school. <laughs> it's just like, Forever. Maybe if I just maybe if I just fail this one class, it's like what your brain's trying to tell you. They'll make me come back. Delay the, the like, process. You'll, you'll get to stay another year. But uh, sounds like sounds like something out of the Shawshank Redemption. Totally. Yeah. I haven't seen ones, that. Oh, it was just a it was just a movie about this. It's it takes place in a prison, and there's this one uh, there's this one inmate who's been there all in prison almost his entire life and so we're not equating Puget Sound to no 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 we're, we're, we're not the best yet. of prisons <laughs> yeah that, this is a really bad metaphor to use but like he, he had been so used to like living like in that he didn't know anything else and so he, he like he, he almost yeah. committed another crime so that he would have to stay and I'm not yeah like I said it's not, really, not yeah. equating the, that's the a really sad team. story I don't think we should finish it <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, we're just it. trying to finish our stories so but yeah, so you you've been you've been at Puget Sound for four years, and it's almost like you want to keep going. But you, I mean, you have you have Kyle, you have a cool job lined up at a consulting firm. Like, yeah. are you are you are you looking forward to that? Are you nervous? Like, what what? what yeah, I mean, I that? I feel I I took a year off after high school and got a little taste of the the real world, and so it was it was actually a struggle to to go back and like to school and do college all the way through. But I'm I'm thrilled to leave. I, I feel very grounded and ready to sort of take on the next stage of my life. And I also have this, this cool uh, thing happening now where my, my little brother is going to be a freshman at Puget Sound next year. So I, I still feel very connected to the campus. And I'm going to still have four years of stories to hear from him as he's coming here. And I'll, I'll probably get to visit him a couple times. And I don't know. I, I just I don't feel like... My connection is over. So. Once a logger, always a logger. <laughs> chop chop. <laughs> what about for the rest of you guys? Like, how are you feeling about heading forward? Like, I mean, I'm I'm in Kyle's boat a little bit, minus the year off after high school, but I, I'm just ready to go in a good way. Like, it's just yeah. you feel like you've done everything. You really feel good about it, and you know you're appreciated. And actually, because I've had you know a month and a half off since <laughs> finishing ASAPs. Uh, kind of had time to slow down and just look at everything just look at this entire campus and all the people and just say I was really lucky and yeah and also really get excited for Teach for America I'm really looking forward to doing that so it's very much it's not that hard I'm kind of looking forward to graduation uh, it's gonna be hard to say goodbye to a lot of people who I've made connections with that's the hardest parts the people but as far as the experience I don't think I could ask for much more so it's pretty easy to walk away what about you, Lindsay? You had, you had met, when we did our pre-show meeting, you had mentioned that like in, in high school, everybody kind of said like, "Oh, I have no idea like when I'll see you again." But the reality was like, "Oh, we'll we'll kind of like be back here. Most of us will be back summers. here during the summers." And I mean, high school uh, reunions are pretty well, are relatively well attended. They're rampant. But I mean, at this, I mean, the, the school has something like 70 to seventy-five percent or more of its students coming from out of state. 
And so we really don't have that same dynamic of like, of course we'll all be back here. Yeah, I think that's one of the big changes for me is realizing that we used to say, this might be the last time I'll ever see you, but in college it, it really might be the last time you ever see 90% of the people that, that you meet. And, you know, we might see each other at, at a, a 10 year reunion, but I don't know, like I had a, yeah, I had a lot of friends that were in, in different years than me and who knows when I'll see them next. But I think that's the cool part that if you're aware as you're leaving that you're going to have to actually make an effort this time to stay in touch. It makes you, I feel like I've really solidified who has made an impact on my life. Um, this past semester, really trying to you know, nurture those relationships that I have deemed important, that people have deemed important. And one of the things that I wanted to say about your senior year, people, they come up to you and they start asking you, like, kind of tentatively, like, so am I allowed to ask you what you're doing after college? And I think a lot of people kind of start freaking out, like, oh, God, I don't know what I'm doing. But um, I just let them know, like, yes, you're allowed to ask me. Um, and, <laughs> and like Marcus and Kyle, like, I, I feel like I've gotten a lot out of my experience here and I'm, I'm ready to leave. They've prepared me to take on whatever comes and while I'm going to miss the kind of safety net that Puget Sound gives you in terms of there's always someone to talk to, there's always something to do, um, I'm ready for the next step and you know I'll just be going right back into classes so I feel like you know I've been doing school for like 17 years now and I'm pretty good at it I think so I'm just going to keep doing that, keep writing papers but um, I don't know it's funny when people start asking you what's next because it's the first time in our lives that we really most of us don't know what we're doing so I'm just glad to have come here and had the support that the school has given me. So, Sandra Rosa, you've done a lot of work in social justice uh, in your four years here. How are you feeling about like the work that you've done? Do you think it's going to be picked up? And like, are, are you comfortable with like walking away from like everything that you put into this? Um. Well, okay. So that just makes me think about one thing in specific. But PSU, we just produced um, a zine, which is short for magazine. <laughs> we just um, produced a zine and it's coming out on Wednesday and I'm hoping that that's something that'll be continued like for the rest of the time that Black Student exists on this campus um, but I'm just worried that it might not be because it was like a Sandra's wants a zine and what do you do it then? <laughs> Okay. But yeah, people, like, but people loved it. Like I, yeah. I, I've talked with a lot of people who have put something into that, and they, they thought it's really cool. So I wouldn't, yeah. I actually wouldn't discount that if I were you. I think it might, I think it might. You could be a contributing that. writer for yeah, years like to come. Who knows? That. But yeah. yeah, I'm just like hoping that the leadership next year is as enthusiastic about people getting their writing out there as I was. So I think it's really interesting because I think everyone here has been some capacity has been in a lot of control of their experience, especially the last year, being you know, Kyle with his own fraternities walking away, me with ASUS, BSU, and then all of the res life stuff you've done. So you had a very strong impact and walking away, that's gone for the most part. You know, it's distant, but you don't have the control. I mean, the nice thing is that, you know, doing other things, I've seen, you know, left res life and still doing great. I mean, obviously yes. Lindsay just stepped in and just took the reins. And <laughs> the people at the school are gonna be able to pick up pretty much every banner and keep running with it and keep doing new things in my experience. So I, I, f I feel pretty good walking away, but it's a weird feeling to go mm -hmm. from having a really big impact on an organization and then walking away and just kind of crossing your fingers knowing the people who are following. So. Yeah, definitely. Just on that note, I in, in January after you know a year and a half of being the official president of ASA, of, uh, <laughs> of uh, Sigma Alpha Epsilon, I, uh, <laughs> I, Same thing. That, that <laughs> thing that I've been working yeah. really hard for this last it's, two what years. What is it? Eight forty. It, it was an acronym organization. Yeah. So, um, so I was. I remember this actually happened yesterday. I, so so I was, a president switched over to Preston Van Buren in, in January, and I've been watching him grow into that role. And I walked in on the executive council's meeting last night. Um, because I had to go to the laundry room and they were meeting in the basement. And um, I just, I got, I, I was like really proud all of a sudden to see how functional the house had become and how I've, I've already, I haven't graduated yet, but I've already stepped away and, and seen them take up the reins. And I know it's probably the same with Brian Ernst and them, you've done your transition. And I, that, that, that aspect of transition is, I think it's so cool because it's just an opportunity for feedback and reflection and 
Uh, it's pretty powerful, so. All right, great. I think we're going to take another quick break. We'll play a song. Uh, you're listening to KUPS. Uh, this is across campus. We've got members of the class of 2012 here in the studio with us today. Stay with us. We'll be back in just a few minutes. Good morning, everybody. You're listening to Across Campus, broadcasting out of KUPS 9.1 FM in Tacoma, Washington. My name is The Sound. You Kyle's got it. I don't, I don't even I don't need to do the liners anymore. I've got Kyle Sleeper in the studio with me today. So, we've got the class of 2012 here in the studio with us. The entire class, around 600. 50 students? No, we just, in this building. We, just, we, just have, we just have four with us today, but they are some of the most exceptional members of that class of 2012. And <laughs> so in this, and we're heading into our last segment. Uh, I would really love to hear from you guys just some advice that you could impart upon us. Uh, that Those of us that are continuing here, those of us that are starting in the fall, uh, what, would you, what would you guys say to, to what would you guys recommend? What, what advice would you give to us? Don't get, don't get it. <laughs> so yeah. what does that what does that mean for you? Just it keep going hard. Top of, like, mm -hmm. Just keep up with your game. Like don't don't fall off the bandwagon or anything. It's it's really easy to your senior year because you just get like tired and overwhelmed, especially if you're like doing co curricular stuff. But you just gotta remember that like school is first, and just don't fall off. Yeah, I would say. Um, do your best to avoid apathy and stay stay motivated both with your academics. But for me, um, I think this message might resonate more with people who feel uh, like they haven't found their place in college yet or at Puget Sound. Um, I had so many friends who transferred out of here over the past four years and the the theme with all of them was was so common. They they just they weren't involved. Um, a lot of them did not feel like a part of the Puget Sound community, and I asked them, you know, well, what are you doing on campus? And they're like, well, I mean, I went to like a PSO trip once, and I just, I just think that really tackling, you know, some some club or, or activity and, and pouring your heart into it, you know, you don't have to do a million things, but doing one thing and really devoting yourself to that community. I mean, I know some people in the beekeeping. The, the hive minders beekeeping club and you know they're so passionate about bees and honey and it's <laughs> and, and and the people they work with and it's that's really cool and it's just i feel like if you if you find a club or organization to devote yourself to it's really hard not to be happy here so i don't know get involved <laughs> actually quick quick point on that hive minders uh thing Preston, Preston came through once, and somebody mentioned that he's actually allergic to bees, but he's still really involved in... Yeah, he's the president. He's the president of the, the high minds club. He's allergic yeah. to bees. He's allergic to bees. <laughs> Doesn't discriminate. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so any, any, it just proves that anybody can get involved in, with anything. Yeah. So We did this thing um, in Res Life, I think during the winter, when we were talking about how do we pull in leaders from across different campus organizations, and how do we get more students of the Greek community, how do we get more more math majors, more people that are in the BSU, like how do we represent Puget Sound campus? And so we had post-it notes that we went and put up, I think it was actually like a big post-it note that was on the wall, like a, a piece of butcher paper. Um, and we went and put a sticker next to a region that we represented. And I kind of sat down after that and I was like, man, I'm only involved in two things. I'm on, you know, I do a, a varsity sport and residence life and I'm a comm studies major communication studies but like Kyle was saying like those are my things I am residence life I do identify as a rower here at Puget Sound and like I didn't do a thousand things but the, the two things I did I did them with with gusto and and really dove into them and you know, just to go back to our metaphor earlier, I just really I <laughs> dove into that. I splashed in. I got that. got yeah, my whole body wet with Puget stuff. Sound. Puget Sound. <laughs> uh, e. <-coli. laughs> 
I'm gonna, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna try and hold on to that metaphor. I think I'm gonna bring that it's back. It's a good one. Yeah. So how, how do you guys get? How do you get yourself wet with Puget Sound? Yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> you might have to explain it. They, they have to watch this. Or well, to this no. I mean, there's show. the new, you know, the 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 Virgin issue of Wetlands Literary Magazine just came out. So speaking of, I, I think that uh, they might be able to really capitalize on on that, that innuendo. <laughs> yeah. We'll enjoy the Walt Disney World. As the lang- English lit major, I feel free to discard that metaphor and move the conversation, <laughs> fine. move the needle. Uh, I don't know. I'm always like really, you know, straightforward with freshmen. Like, you shouldn't be going here and spending all that money if you're not getting involved beyond mm-hmm. academics. Mm-hmm. And it always astounds me how many people are paying forty five thousand dollars a year to have an academic experience, which is great here, but it's not, you know, forty five thousand dollars a year. Great, you've got to get involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think. I don't know, at this point, looking back and just looking at like all the people I know, all my friends across campus, the ones who got involved, you know, obviously, you know, progress academically in college over four years, but there's an individual growth and a capacity realization in terms of critical thinking, communication, uh, empathy, a lot of different things that are really subtle. And I don't think we see it happening until we look back and think of who we were when we got here and getting involved and just for me I just know looking in the mirror and then looking at some friends who came a long ways and it wasn't like oh I took a class on you know individual development no it was the experience here and it's really hard to you know put that in words what exactly happened but it definitely happened and pretty much every senior walking you know getting their diploma has experienced that who got involved but it doesn't happen unless you involve yourself and there's so many open doors here uh, it's ridiculous not to walk through a couple yeah. yeah, I mean, even just taking advantage of the, the coffee hour that our president has in diversions or walking up to you know, Dean of Students, Mike Sagawa's office, the fact that as students, we're completely open access to such, you know, high administrators and, and teachers. It's like, it, know, that I doesn't happen do elsewhere. That, yeah. yeah. No. And they love being here. I mean, a lot of them had an op- of the administrators and staff, they had opportunities to advance their careers and go somewhere else and chose to really just dedicate themselves to this school and this community. Because they, unlike us, they can stay. And uh, they love it so much. And I think that creates a community and this culture of appreciation that you don't find at other places. Actually, the, <clears throat> there was a, I went to a, a, co- a conference, they had, they had like a, a conference call with a bunch of different universities yeah. and they had Trita Parsi uh, talking about Iran and the United States and uh, the relationship between the two countries. And this was a conference call between tons of different universities. And so there were a lot, a lot of big East Coast schools, a lot of big state schools, and there's Puget Sound. And the professors that showed up to that, I mean, it was just, it was funny, like, listening to all their, like, quips about all these different universities. And they really, like, play up and love, like, and I, I, I don't even know, sorry, I don't even think it's playing it up. They actually, like, love Puget Sound, and they're really proud of their students here. So, I, I mean, I... I, to- I totally see what you're saying, Marcus, as far as like that uh, pride, that pride in like working at Puget Sound and that love of like of working with students. Like you, that's uh, that's a special thing that our professors have uh, going for us. So, yeah, I mean, I think another thing is just we have like a legendary core of professors that are that all the students you know can name and recognize, and you know. Everybody knows Nancy Bristow. Everyone knows who Dexter Gordon is. Everybody knows who Mott Green is. Everybody knows who, you know, all, all these professors are that you say their name and they're they're titans on our campus. And then if you you know Google their name, they're they're titans elsewhere. I mean, they're just they're just so such powerful and passionate instructors and educators, and they they push us. They're, so they're ours. <laughs> yeah, they're ours. <laughs> so, I don't know, taking. I, I think, Mar- Marcus, you really hit on it. This school, the, the price to go to this school, whether you're on full financial aid or you're paying it out of pocket, you know, 45 plus thousand dollars a year is coming from somewhere. And if you're not capitalizing on the full experience, you're just not getting your money's worth. So. All right, we have, five, we have five minutes left in the show. Any last comments that you guys want to make to the student body, to anybody coming here in the future? This is your last chance to get out of the air. I want to say something specifically to black students on campus and black students who might come into this campus. Um, I think I think you should get involved with BSU, for one thing. 
Um, I think it's really easy to feel alone on this campus just because you don't see too many people who look like you here. And I think that being involved um, with something like BSU is, um, it's like a support group. And I think I've talked to a lot of people who came into BSU like their junior year or even their senior year, and they say things like, I really wish I would have like done this earlier because I didn't know that it was like this. I didn't know that we had this sort of support group here. Um, so I think just not being afraid to, you know, leave the general student body, like don't make that make you feel uncomfortable. Um, and just, if you feel like you need some sort of support, like find it, um, cause it's definitely here for you, so. You know, we were talking about just saying yes to every and all opportunities that might come your way. Um, just get involved dip your feet in a couple different pools, do BSU, you know, regardless of where you identify, like meet some cool people, um, do res life, it's the greatest. <laughs> yeah, this is a ch it's just a chance for everybody to do a plug for whatever they've been involved in. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, it's more also just throw out there, because we're talking so much about getting involved, getting involved, getting involved, be patient too, don't force things, or don't like feel like the first thing you dive into here. It has to be your path. For me, it's been across the board, a lot yeah. of different paths. For a lot of people, that's the case. I feel like some people, like at the end of the freshman year, like, I really haven't found my niche yet. And they might even transfer because that, even if they've tried, and I really think, I do believe there's a place for everyone at this campus, but it might take more than a year. It might take two years, three years, but it's going to solidify at some point. So uh, I think our stories testify to that. And so just know that it's coming and just, you know, keep, you know, plodding along and keep your eyes open. Keep doing your thing. Yeah. yeah, and I would I would just throw in, um, don't be afraid to challenge the campus to be better than they currently are. Um, I this is an old saying from uh, from my theater department in high school, but you want you wanted to go to a cast party and and treat the house like it was your grandmother's house and leave it better than you found it, you know. Um, and I just feel like that about the university. Like, come here and leave it better than when you found it, because there's, there are wonderful things here, but there's still a lot of work to do. And, you know, if, if you don't know what, what Green Dot is, go Google Green Dot. Yeah. If you don't know, you know, what Six Pack of Common Sense is, like, just go and make good decisions and, and find out and educate yourself to to combat the the stuff on campus that still needs to be combated. Yeah, this campus is designed for student involvement and yeah. the students that contribute. Like, even to the board of trustees where there's students on the trustees, like, Students have a unique opportunity here to affect or impact their own experience. All the people in this room have experienced that, and it's just a really neat thing. And it's kind of, you know, on the part of the school, it's kind of putting themselves out on a ledge to give the students that much autonomy in dictating the direction of the school. But I would say seize that yeah. as a student because you have a chance to really impact not just your experience, but everyone else and those to come. So. Find your voice. All right, that bring that's that has brought us to the end of our uh, our hour. Kyle, Santa Rosa, uh, Marcus, Lindsay, want to thank you guys for coming to the studio. It's been a phenomenal show, and I'll make sure to post this on YouTube. It'll be available to uh, international. Yeah, audiences. I mean, you guys, I'm I'm expecting it to go viral. So, with that, <laughs> with that, you guys, this has been the class of 2012 here on Across Campus. You're listening to KEPS 90.1 FM Tacoma, The Sound. It's been a great year, you guys. Thanks. Thank you. Well done, you guys. That was really cool. Oh, gosh. We're still recording. Pew <laughs> still. Hey, you guys. I really.